This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to do a smackdown between two high-end Windows phones, second generation on AT&T, the HTC Titan here on my left and the Samsung Focus S here on the right. Both sell for $199, run Windows Phone 7.5 Mango, have large displays, and plenty of internal storage. So here we have the HTC Titan on the left and the Samsung Focus S on the right. So you see they're both large phones, and surprisingly though, the Titan has a 4.7 inch display, hence the name. It's not all that much bigger than the 4.3 inch Samsung Focus S. Focus S has an 800 by 480 Super AMOLED Plus display. That means no pentile arrangement for those of you who hate pentile displays. It's bright. It's not the most color accurate in the world. As we know, it tends to have a bias toward the blue, but overall, the, the bi color bias is well c controlled here in Windows Phone OS, and it's a really nice, sharp, bright display. But the Titan fights back, not only with the big display, but they got a lot of color saturation out of that super LCD display, also running at 800 by 480 pixels, because that's what Windows Phone supports. The uh, specs are pretty written in stone for a lot of things, including the the CPU that's used, the display resolution, and some of the basic features like the required camera, dedicated camera button, having Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and the GPS, that kind of stuff. So I used to feel like I was missing out a little bit on those Super AMOLED Plus displays because of their vivid colors. I don't feel that at all with the Titan. It has a more neutral color bias that I like. So I would give the display a win. Even though you don't have a whole lot of pixel density here, it's about 198 pixels per inch on the Titan, given the fact that it's stretched out to 4.7 inches. Typography and graphics are so well handled in Windows Phone 7 that you really don't spend a lot of time saying, look at that, man, I can see pixels, I can see grainy fonts. That's not the case. Where I do notice it the most is actually in the web browser where, where Microsoft in IE9 Mobile doesn't do as great a job as they could, I think, in rendering web-based fonts, but it's still a good-looking display, no doubt about it. Both phones have HSPA Plus 14.4 megabit 4G or 4G, depending on how you like to look at that. It's not true LTE. Windows Phone doesn't yet support that. And our download speeds are about the same. Now, I know some of you have been talking about maybe not getting the greatest download speeds on your phone, but we're seeing about the same on both, and generally speaking, about the same bars, as you can see, for reception. And we'll take a look at bandwidth applications so you can see our speed test results, and you can see they are just about the same on both. And I'll switch to the history page. Text here is a little bit small, but you can see that it's been comparable. It ranges from about, oh, generally speaking, around 2.5 up to 4.5 megabit per second down and around a meg, megabit per second up. So in terms of data speeds, really, it's the same on both phones. One thing to keep in mind, and this leads into the whole design philosophy difference between the two of these, the Titan has an interesting unibody design where the entire back casing comes off, and we'll show you that right now. Take this off, and all of your guts are exposed, and you've got this really nice metal and aluminum, yes, this part is a metal, I know it's light, but it's aluminum, casing here. So big quality design points for the HTC. Yes, it weighs about an ounce and a half more than the Samsung, but that's what it's going to cost you. But one thing to note here, the back cover has antenna elements. These connect to the contacts over here. So if you're having any reception issues with Wi-Fi or with 3G, 4G, make sure that you've got the cover snapped fully on because those do have to make contact. So just give it a little press in all the corners and make sure that it's on. The Samsung is pretty much a dead ringer for the Samsung Galaxy S2. Also in AT&T we've got the same slim design, the hard plastic chin here, and the uh, funky textured back, and an incredibly lightweight flimsy that cover. It's wafer thin. So it's your typical Samsung. It's not an unattractive phone. It is a nice looking phone. It's your typical black slab phone, but it doesn't say, look at me, I'm made of metal. I'm super duper high quality. And here you can see their back view together side by side. So in terms of design quality and design sophistication, I would give the win to the HTC Titan. In terms of horsepower and performance, they're very close. The, the Titan has a 1.5 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon CPU with Adreno 205 graphics, and this has the same CPU running at 1.4 gigahertz with the same Adreno 205 graphics. Really, there's no difference in the response on either of these. That, that small difference you're just not going to notice. They're both very fast phones. Windows Phone 7.5 Mango in general is just a very fast responsive operating system, but when you're doing things like playing Xbox Live 3D games and stuff like that where you're 
demanding more of the CPU. They're both neck and neck and both very fast. Likewise, they open and render web pages with similar speed. Both phones have 512 megs of RAM. Again, that's set by Windows uh, as a standard for phones, and they have 16 gigs of storage. Now, the operating system and key files use up some of that space, and the Samsung actually has a gig more of available in -store internal storage for your use. And likewise, because the, the CPU and GPU powering these is so close to being the same, video playback on both of these is excellent and comparable. Both phones have 1.3 megapixel front video chat cameras. Right now, Tango is the only application you can use to do video chat. Hopefully, Skype will come soon because Microsoft did buy them after all, but for right now, that's what you got there. And they both have 8 megapixel rear shooters with LED flashes. They both take excellent pictures as well. They have fast lenses that are good at low light. And they take pleasing shots. I would say that the Samsung has more of a tendency to white out outdoors, but I like the color saturation on indoor shots. And this one handles whiteout situations outdoors better and a little bit noisier for indoor shots. But it wins for camera features. What they've added is panorama and burst shot, which is not available on the Samsung. And the panorama particularly is pretty cool. And both have plenty of other settings for scene effects, white balance, EV saturation, all that kind of thing. And now we're looking at the Samsung, same basic interface here. And when you tap here, and you can see what options you have here. You have Autofocus setting, white balance, image effect, sharpness, saturation, all that kind of stuff. In terms of phone dialer and software, again, it's going to be identical. That's pretty well written in stone for a Windows Phone 7.5 Mango. But when it comes to call quality, I would give the Samsung the edge. It has really good clarity and fullness for incoming and outgoing voice. Lately, Samsung's been doing just a bang-up job with their Android Galaxy S2 phones and with this guy, who's basically a derivative of that. The Titan doesn't have bad voice quality by any means. It's pretty good, but it sometimes can sound a little digitized and garbled on both ends. Just a little bit. Like I said, not a, not a bad voice phone, but not as stellar as a Samsung. And that's more noticeable when you're using Bluetooth peripherals, either a car kit or a headset, which usually exacerbates any audio flaws. You'll, you'll notice it more with the Titan than you will with the Samsung. So the Samsung gets the win for call quality. Another thing to mention is you, you can pretty much grip the Samsung any way you want. You can death grip it, and, and the this, this signal is pretty steady. This guy, given the design that it has with the antenna being in back here in the cover, now it's a big phone. This is not really easy to do unless you have really big hands, but if you grip it, particularly covering and squeezing on this area, you can actually drop it a bar in reception. How often are you going to hold it like that? Only you know how you like to hold your phone, but something to keep in mind. Now both of these are Zune phones for music and, and video playback, particularly the music playback really rocks on Zune phones. And you're going to have the same interface here, but the speaker on the Titan is better. It's really amazingly loud for a phone and, and pretty full and clear too. And we'll just pick something and play it so you can hear that. It's nice and full, and we're near max volume, and we still don't have any distortion, and I have to shout over it so loud. And we've got the same one going. It's also reasonably loud, and this is maximum volume. It's not quite as loud, nor quite as full. Now both of these come with their respective manufacturers hub live tiles, the HTC one here, and this is the Samsung one, which features daily briefing. And I would have to say that this is more useful here on the HTC. So you get your weather here, but you get that really fancy HTC weather with multiple cities going over here. You get your stocks. You get stocks on this one, too, on this screen. You get various news feeds. That, that stuff's all the same. But if you take a look at the additional applications that are available, so we take a look now at Samsung's offerings over here versus HTC's. We've got HTC Watch for streaming video purchase and rental. We've got their photo enhancer. You also get a, a basic photo enhancer here on the Samsung, so that's pretty fair comparison. HTC includes a DLNA client, which is pretty neat because that's not built into Windows Phone. No such thing here in the world of Samsung. 
You do get Samsung's little mini diary application. It's a cute little diary application. You get a camp, a compass here for HTC. You can have the camera enhancements that we saw for adding panorama and such. And they've got a flashlight and just generally, I would say, some more useful stuff. They have a connection manager, too, for those of you who need to futz with your APN settings, and it works pretty well. Samsung has one, but it's really meant more for overseas phones, and it's pretty difficult to use with these guys here, made for the U.S. In terms of built-in applications and the AT&T software bundle, by the way, all the AT&T stuff is removable. If you don't want UVerse, for example, you can just whack it and make it go away. Anyway, they're identical on both. They both have IE9 Mobile and MS Office Suite. Neither it has Adobe Flash because that's not supported yet for Windows Phone. And you get the People Hub with the integration for Twitter and Facebook, really sweet and slick. So that's a SmackDown comparison between the HTC Titan and the Samsung Focus S, both available now on AT&T for $199. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for full reviews of both phones, and don't forget to check out our YouTube videos of both of these phones, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.